Friend of mine. Hi, Ashley. Hi. 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 We've got Matt Rosenberg here. He doesn't need the, the apple cream. Do you want to Let's see what would happen. Let's just for fun. No, okay. Whoa. Oh. Too much. Very tough. There we go. Phew. Uh, Matt is a comic book writer. I am. And a wonderful dude. And also, not. did you drink half a gallon of chocolate milk on your way here? I'm so proud. No, that's all morning. Okay. It's all day. You gotta stay hydrated at comic conventions. That's it's super important. Like thinking about all hydration? that chocolate milk. Yeah, yeah. It's a liquid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's this is my first convention, so is that what I need milk. to do? I, yeah. I did it wrong. If you don't drink oh, that, you're gonna be real sick tomorrow. Okay, all right. Yeah. Warm drink milk. A gallon. Warm chocolate milk. Yeah. Sitting out for a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. At the table, if you have a table. You're good. Okay, awesome. So, day one of the con, uh, what is what has been going on for you today? Uh, I have been running around a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been sitting at my table, signing some books, talking to people about books, and then I did Marvel's Next Big Thing panel. Ooh. Nice. Did we, what did we talk about with you with Next Big yeah. Thing? With me? Yeah. Uh, well, we were talking about uh, The Punisher, mm -hmm. which I am taking over mm -hmm. next month. It's October. I'm taking that over <laughs> <laughs> next month-ish. Okay. Um, and uh, that is where Frank Castle steals the war machine armor and goes to war. And we talked about, we weren't supposed to talk about Tales of Suspense, but we did. It was, oh, it was, wow. it's, uh, it's announced, the book is, the book is uh, announced, but someone in the question had a, someone in the audience had a question about Black Widow. Mm. And that is where the mysteries around Black Widow's death will be discussed. Very oh. cool. Wow. Yes. And that Tales of Suspense book, I mean, we've, we've seen the art we've a little bit, so we know that it's Bucky and Hawkeye it together. Is, yes, it is. Uh, people begin to die, and they are people that Natasha was not crazy about. Mm -hmm. And uh, they die in Black Widow-esque ways. Mm. And so uh, Bucky and Hawkeye not the biggest fans of each other, decide to investigate, and their investigations lead to each other, where they team up, they don't get along, they get into some trouble, and they fall into a hole of who is killing people and why. Mm. I thought you were going to say, it? and they find friendship oh. at the uh, end of the tunnel. I mean, I don't want to spoil the book, mm. okay. um, but they do not. Uh, they okay. do not. <laughs> Here's the thing that I'm sure you're going to get if you haven't gotten it already, are the... Uh, the shippers that yeah. are oh, yeah. oh yeah. Is yeah. it there okay. are Hawk Buck, <gasps> Buckeye? What, 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 what's no, Buck well first of all, obviously Buckeye. But <laughs> I don't know, uh, Hawk Buck. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm I'm gonna lean toward Hawk Buck. Hawk it's it, tricky to say. I mean, I find myself saying Buckeye accidentally a lot mm -hmm. and people just stare at me. Um, but what's interesting actually is that people want people a lot of people are reaching out to me being like, um, Clint and Natasha are the truest love in the Marvel Universe and they need to get together. And then people saying, Bucky and Natasha are the truest oh, love. And wow. it's about 50-50. Really? Which makes me want to just send these people to each other and yeah. say, you guys need to work this out and then come to me and I will ignore it and do what I think is right. But I think that they should work it out amongst themselves. I, I love, I personally love the, the Bucky Natasha romance and the tragedy yes. of that to oh. me is, is the biggest thing and like yeah. how like memories were lost and things changed and like that adds an element of sadness and loss to it that is hard to to overcome. Yeah, they have a shared trauma that that it's hard because they are so close and, and care so much for each other and so much of that comes from a shared shared awful experiences and that's really beautiful that they found each other and very sad that they lost each other. Yeah. Yeah. I just find it hard that her exes are chilling out, just probably talking about her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, that is a big thing. Worst <laughs> nightmare, right? Yeah, yeah. worst nightmare. Yeah. So, <laughs> I dated so-and-so, too. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a weird one. Matt, how did you get started at Marvel? Um, I got started at Marvel. I was publishing my own comics, which were pretty bad. Don't look for them on eBay. <laughs> well, now they're going to do that. Yeah, no, well, I realize that. That's the first thing that. I'm doing as soon as this interview's done. And <laughs> then uh, I did a book called 12 Reasons to Die with uh, Riza and Ghostface Killa from the Wu-Tang Clan. Ooh. Um, and then I did a couple other books for a company called Black Mask and a Marvel editor who uh, named John Moison, mm -hmm. who is... Uh, 
no longer at Marvel, but is still a beautiful human being. We like we love John. We love John. Yeah, yeah. love is strong, but um, I love John. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but uh, he asked me to do Secret War, a short story in Secret Wars Journal mm -hmm. Number One, and I remember at the time uh, I sent it in. It was an X Men story. And the first page had, I was like, these are the 36 X-Men you see on this page. <laughs> and he wrote back, and he was like, why are there 36 X-Men on the page? And I said, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to write the X-Men again. <laughs> I need them all on the page. And he was like, can we do 12? And I was like, no, it's got to be 36. <laughs> so in the end, it's 36 X-Men on the page. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Who, who, who had to draw this for you? Yeah. Uh, a great artist named Luca Pizzari. Okay. Um, yeah, he drew Very it. upset with you, I'm sure. He, he was, he was. <laughs> he's great, he moved to New York and we hang out and he's a great guy, but he was not happy when he got no. that script. Why would he be? They don't even talk, they don't do anything, they're just in a room. <laughs> they're just there. Yeah. How did you decide which 36 you were gonna... I mean, you go to your top 36 X-Men. <laughs> yeah. Do, and do they you are. not have your well, top 36 I, do, I have my top 56, but I just feel like they'd be yeah. a little bit much. In so alphabetical order. No, I don't yeah, know. Just... <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, that, was, that was my first thing at Marvel and shockingly, Marvel asked me to do more things. Wow. And here I am now writing uh, four books for you all. That's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's very fun. It's amazing. It's a lifelong dream come true. To be have have so. there been surreal moments for you like as you've started getting down this journey? Because I know like, I've known you for a while since before you worked at Marvel and mm -hmm. like, know that you are a fan. You oh, love yeah. these characters. You love these stories. You've been engulfed in the universe for years. My, I mean... They're all surreal moments. It's mm -hmm. it's meeting Joe Casada and having him be like, oh, I like this thing, or you know, like it's every fan who buys a book and says like, oh, you did a good job. That's a surreal moment for me. The most surreal was I had to research something and I was looking on Wikipedia about the Inhumans, and it started talking about my story, yes. and I had this moment yes. where I was like. Oh. What? How did this get on here? That's not supposed to be there. And then I was like, oh, wait, no, that is actually continuity. Yeah. It's not it, your head like, canon. Yeah. It's actually canon. How are they getting to my fanfic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it really anyway. felt, uh, it was a real moment where I, I just stared at it and was like, this doesn't make sense. And I was processing it and then was like, oh, and I needed to close the computer and walk away for a minute and recontextualize my life. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Yeah. At this point, have you created new Marvel characters? Yeah, but I really like um, you literally read my mind. killing them. So I created a bunch oh. of <laughs> killing them, uh, which is, you know. How is, I was going to ask about, like, with these characters, the ones that you create and some of, like, the fan favorites and the ones that you love so much, like, doing messed up things to them, like, how does that work? Yeah. How do you sleep at night? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Uh, I, I think there's a thing when you read the books, you love the characters and you're protective of them. And when you write the books, now that I'm on the other side, you want them to overcome things. You want them to face these challenges. That's what the greatest stories are, is, is the, the Marvel characters and the Marvel heroes persevering and surviving. So you want to throw things at them, and it's hard and you know they'll get through it, and that's mm. and it's it's kind of amazing to be like I think they're going to be a little stronger when they come out of this. I think they're going to be a little better, and that's that's the hope at least. Except when I read the Kingpin, in which case it's like <laughs> he's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> but when you approach a character like Kingpin to kind of get inside that head, don't you have to kind of be on his side a little bit? Oh, I yes, I'm a hundred percent. I'm a I. You're pro Kingpin. I am, in a sense, I, I was such a kingpin ap apologist that my editors had to be like, are you pretending? And I was like, no, I think that when you distance yourself yeah. from, from Wilson Fisk, he, he's just Spider-Man, but one degree off. He loves the city and he cares about it and he wants the best for it, but he has this big world view, and people are like, well, he profits from this stuff, and it's like, well, Tony Stark profits from these things, and it's like, well, he kills people, and it's like, well, the Punisher kills people, and Moon Knight kills people. Like, there are all these things where it's like, he's not a hero, but his goals are somewhat altruistic, but he also likes to line his pockets, so he's, he's difficult. Um, but he also chokes people to death and does bad things. There's, there's a path that if something, if his father wasn't who his father was. Yes. Or if, if, like, he could have grown up in those same similar situations and something could have been slightly different mm -hmm. and he could be leading the Avengers. A hundred percent. He yeah. is smart and driven and passionate and had a, I mean, he has everything that a Marvel hero has yeah. and just a broken moral compass. He's just took the wrong steps, but he's, he's Spider-Man at his core. He's, he's Daredevil. He, I mean, he is Matt Murdock, just 
a little nastier. Mm. I suddenly feel like I need to go out and help children. Um, <laughs> I think um, we should all be doing that. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. Anyways, but now inspired too. Um, yeah. Where can fans find you uh, at the con and online? I am in the very warm artist alley. I've heard uh, it's, uh, it's very warm. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's very warm. It's, warm. it's nice. There. Yeah, I mean, bring, bring, a bring yeah, bring a bathing suit. <laughs> um, uh, I'm at tables. Let's say C25, and if I'm not there, and it's someone else's table, buy something from them. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> online, uh, my name is searchable. I'm not the Matt Rosenberg who writes for the New York Times, although he's very nice on Twitter. Mm. There you go. Go to that Google.com. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Have Matt. a wonderful Comic Con. I'll take I this from this. you. Oh my God, thank oh, you. Hello? Lorraine, I think it's for you. Oh.